What do you mean there's a typo in the title? That's my name! And I'm the David! I speak for the trees! These ones have tiny cubes right on their leaves. Within the art of messing about with voxels, you'll encounter Octrees a lot, but I see much less about its alternatives and its variants. So what I'm about to show you is several of the hidden gems I wish I knew when I first started to work on all this. These gems are the Octree, the 64 tree and their unit, as in the 512 tree. All of these data structures are space partitioning directed acidly tree graphs. Right, right, okay, okay, down with the pitchforks, let me explain. Space partitioning, meaning they subdivide space and their representation is taking it up completely. A graph is a well-defined structure consisting of nodes and edges where nodes are connected by edges, directed, meaning the edges all have a direction pointing from one node to another one, acyclic, meaning no path traversed inside the graph can result in a circle. All of these properties make them tree graphs because they look like trees. Uh, kinda. What the fire truck? Is this piece of tree. And the nodes who have no children, the nodes who are not pointing to any other nodes inside the graph, are called leaf nodes. This is to fit this whole forest vibe we got going on. These structures, also called space spanning trees, divide space into cubes. If you're wondering why that's great, voxels is a fancy name for cubes. So this is really helpful if you want to store cubes for what, whatever reason, or display them. As a bonus feature, you'll see later, this setup can even store cubes of multiple sizes. These structures also have magical compression abilities because empty spaces are simply not represented as nodes and thus not taking up any data. Likewise, if we have a part of space containing all of the same data, it can be stored in a single data instead of an array of values taking up precious, precious space. Another really useful property of these trees is recursion, which if you missed, I explain here. A matrix, on the other hand, is just a long orderly mishmash of data in a simple structure. Storing it and iterating it is really simple but impractical and expensive most of the time. It's because it doesn't have the properties I just described. Empty space inside the matrix is just cells with filler data. It needlessly occupies space and it's not straightforward to skip empty regions. Although there are techniques for that as well, for example distance fields. But that is not a topic for this video. Tell me in the comments if you're interested in that. I would love to make a video about it, even if it's not currently used in my library. The variants I have mentioned differ mainly in the number of maximum children one node can have. An octree has a maximum of 8 children in each node. That is what I use in the library and that is what I use to present the idea so far. Side note, I'm actually in the middle of reworking the library to use BrickMap instead of an octree. It's kind of a long story I'm going to talk about later on in the video. The name comes from Latin octo meaning 8. 64 tree is not translated from Latin here because, uh, well, 64 in Latin means sexaginta quatuor. And the name tree is very hard to push through academical circles. The meat. <laughs> yeah, boy. Fellow scholars are also calling them countries. Con trees. After the Greek translation of 64, which is tetrahexa conta. At least I can pronounce this one. As the name suggests, it has 64 children, which is dividing out the space into a 4x4x4 four by four by four matrix or on node. The big cousin of these structures are 512 trees. They have a maximum of 512 children, as the name implies, but for today's voxel that that's just a big overkill. I'll talk about why in a minute. Let's just say for now that there is a typical voxel resolution today and there is an ideal representation for it. I strongly think that 64 trees are better suited for this than oak trees or 512 trees. There is a sweet spot for the number of children a node can have to best fit the data it is representing, and there are other factors than data resolution to determine that. For example, cache friendliness. 
pretty much oversimplifying things, we can think of each node consisting of pointers to children and various other data containing useful node properties. For example, occupied bits. Psst, psst. I have a video about them here. You'll pretty much want to have all relevant nodes within the first level of cache when your ray tracing algorithm is cooking, so it's best to pack relevant nodes tightly together when possible, because if you access one mid render, you'll probably have the others quickly available as well, and that helps access times a lot. This might seem like a minor thing, but with voxel landscapes, we are talking about a lot of numbers, potentially gigabytes, so it, it adds up. This is where the different children sizes of nodes become relevant. If one node covers a larger spatial area, while it has more children, there are also fewer nodes overall to work with. With fewer and larger nodes, and with more children for each node, there is a much better chance that a useful node is loaded into cache in advance through this strategy, so it is available faster. Additionally, there is information not stored inside the data, but deduced. An example of this would be child position. Every child is assigned well-defined relative position inside the node, but because these positions are always the same, they are not stored in the data itself because position can always be deduced from the offset from the first child pointer. For example, the first child pointer is always at 0, 0, 0 inside the node. So then, why not make a 4096 tree or bigger? Basically, even 512 trees are found to converge too quickly in practice. Each cube a node covers is divided up into equal parts based on the number of children it can potentially contain. Converging rate means the rate the covered area is decreasing during the ray tracing iteration. The cubes inside the node are getting really really small real quick, so much so that it becomes impractical to upkeep the overhead cost by simply having this many children for one node. If you have data taking up, for example, a 5 by 5 by 5 square, you wouldn't really want to reserve 4K by 4K by 4K area for it, now would you? Ray tracing iteration also has some overhead depending on the structure it is traversing based on the size of each node. For example, child pointer values. Essentially, traversing bigger, more complex structures take more resources, which becomes wasteful if the structure is not optimally representing the data it stores. So that was it then. I was barely scratching the surface, but I am hoping this was a good overview about trees, cause I'm a nature freak like that. If you think I made mistakes, please correct them. Let's improve together. And about the future. You might have noticed the lack of tech showcases in this video about my renderer. It's because I thought I have the basics in the pocket, but not half an hour after I uploaded my previous video came this wonderful, amazing feedback. And of course it touched not only my heart, but the very depths of the library. Am I rewriting this whole large thing to accommodate this? You bet. <laughs> But, but I just couldn't leave my beloved project to be based on something I didn't see fit for a state-of-the-art tech, even if it is not state-of-the-art yet, and even if I see others having extraordinary successes like, like Douglas and Frozen. Those guys are really amazing, it's no other word for it. But I do hope this level of attention to the basics can push my own project into hyperdrive. Yeah, and I, I am actually really happy to be learning still, because my ultimate goal is to live long and keep my mind fresh, and I will stay healthy even if it kills me. <laughs> but anyhow, I'm, it's gonna take a while, I don't, I don't care if the library is good enough as it is. I'm really striving for excellence here, mostly because this is why I'm doing this. I still want to do at least shadows and some type of illumination later this year, so I... I'm not giving up, I can still see that happening, I will keep you posted. And as always I welcome any feedback, question that you, yes you specifically have, that means you too Tom. Ask me questions, challenge me, I'd love to debate, interact, it's kind of working out for me already because so far, together, you, the community and me, we have defeated not one but two glass ceilings, woohoo! That's it's kind of great actually, it's a good feeling. Right, uh, see you next time then. Bye!